this is my son, Jacob. Hi. It's okay to be taller because you're actually 18 years of age. Uh -huh. And uh, in my family, we're the quite short. <laughs> car keys. Do the car keys. They're hidden. Oh. And uh, <clears throat> you're leaving for college. <clears throat> Thank you. You're leaving for college, and you've been a good son. And But there are some things that I'd like to share with you before you leave. We're going to miss you, and uh, because you are a good son. And, but there are things I want you to remember, and uh, to not forget, ever. And things that you need to do, and observe, and keep, and walk by, and uh, continually keep on your mind and keep your heart soft and uh, uh, because when you get out there when you get to college you're going to encounter all kinds of people because, because Mr. Anak has a lot of kids in that college and so a lot of little Anakims are walking around and uh, you know, they have tendencies and they have uh, practices that are not acceptable. And you're going to meet them. You're going to, there's no question that some of them are going to be in your class, in your classes, and you're going to encounter them. And, and um, so there are things you absolutely need to remember and not forget. Don't ever forget to love the Lord your God first. That's the most important thing, to love your neighbor, to remember us. You can phone us, not collect, but you can phone us. <laughs> and um, so let's review some of the do's and don'ts, you know, that you've learned so far, because you're going to be on your own. So you need to listen to what you hear. Be careful to what you listen to. Keep the commandments. Do everything that you have learned about walking with the Lord. And be steadfast in your walk with the Lord. Don't ever forget. Fear the Lord first. Serve Him with all of your heart where the Lord has placed you. Circumcise your heart. Or don't be stiff-necked. Remember to keep your heart soft and palpable. Cling to Adonai. And you remember when we talked about this, that the word cling means to be glued, davak, to Adonai. Don't ever let the glue get old and dry and fall away. Be glued to Adonai. Swear by his name only. Mention his name and uh, in, in a good way. Don't ever misuse the name of the Lord. You're going to hear people misuse the name of the Lord. You're going to hear them try to tempt you. So love him, love your neighbor. Don't covet their stuff. And the Lord will be with you. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will bless you. He will bless uh, the work of your hands. So whenever you write papers, you will have a clear mind and you will be able to excel in everything that you do. And so, um, these are very important things. You've heard those things before. But before you leave home, my son, it's important that you be reminded of those things. So this is my farewell speech to you, that you never forget the Lord, never forget us, never forget the good things that you learn under the leadership of Rabbi Erbach in uh, this congregation. And so the, your next leader, you know, the president of the university. I spoke to him, his name is Mr. Joshua. And uh, he's, he's going to lead you. And he's going to keep an eye on you. And uh, because you will be tempted. There are giants in that university where you're going. So you're going to, to, uh, uh, to face them. And so do you hear me? I do, yeah, I need the credit card though. Yeah, you need the credit card. Okay, just a second. <laughs> yes, I hear you, I do. Yes, okay, so those are very important. So thank you, my son.
promise you, Mom? <laughs> I bring my laundry bag. I bring my laundry bag. <laughs> That's okay. I'll do your laundry anytime you, <laughs> you want. No problem. So when I read the book of Deuteronomy, that's how I read the book, is as the farewell speech of Moses to his kids. He's not going to see them anymore. And a lot of what we find in the book of Deuteronomy, he, we find in Exodus, and in Numbers, and in Leviticus. And so, but 40 years after Moses was given the law, then he goes back over it with his kids. Don't forget, remember. So those are two key words that we find. Uh, always remember, don't forget. Remember, don't forget. And what happens in this uh, parasha, which is from 7.12 to 11.25, it's a parasha called Ekev, uh, you have Moses reminding them of what God has done for them reminding them of the exodus, reminding them that God gave them ten commandments, reminding them to love the Lord, reminding them that uh, of what, how God has worked in their lives before, how faithful God has been even when they were not faithful in the wilderness. And Moses also talks about the future. So Moses talks about the past, talks about the future, said you're going to a place that is new a place that I told you I would give to you. And so, but in that place, you have to remember, don't forget, you have to do, walk. Uh, all these verbs are repeated over and over again. Keep, uh, keep the, the, the instructions that you were given. So a lot of good things have happened in the past because of God's faithfulness, and a lot of good things will happen in the future because of God's faithfulness if you remain faithful to God. Because there are consequences that are also mentioned in this parasha that if you do not obey, this is what's going to happen. If you do not keep, if you do not walk according to the ways of the Lord, there will be challenges, there will be obstacles, there will be all kinds of things that you're going to face, and we all do. And Moses was well aware that there were Canaanites in the land. And you know when you're 18 years old and, and uh, uh, you know, you hear the speech and, yes, yes, uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah, I know, I know, of course I know. And, uh, yes, you know, I'm mature now, I'm going to college. And, but it didn't take long that they were in Shittim and found themselves looking at Moabitess women and say, Woo, woo, <laughs> who are these women? You know, so the temptation came very quickly, shortly after Moses was gone. So in this parasha, constantly, I hear the heart of Moses really telling them, you need to make sure that you stay faithful to the Lord as the Lord has been faithful to you. There are some key words that are repeated several times. Eretz, the word for land. The land's before you. You're going into the land. I promised your forefathers the land. So the land is there. It's a gift that I have given to you and to your forefathers. So go in and live in the land, but be careful. The word chelem, which means something that is banned or something that is set aside for destruction. And there are several times where the word is repeated in one of the chapters, and God is, and Moses says to the Israelites, some things are banned. And if you touch these banned things, you will become banned. And these things are meant to be destroyed, so if you dabble in those banned things, you will experience destruction also. So be careful. Remember, don't forget what you've heard before. And there are some key verses in this passage. One of them we're familiar with in chapter 8, verse 3. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Adonai. And uh, this is mentioned by uh, Yeshua in Matthew 4, 4, Luke 4, 4. And when did Yeshua say this? And who did he say this to? When the devil came to tempt him, as the devil comes to tempt us, he says, man shall not live. And of course, he was tempted with bread. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So Yeshua knew scripture by heart. 
and we can speak the word of God, which is powerful, alive, sharper than any two-edged sword, when the devil comes and tempts us and, to, and wants to lead us astray. We can speak the word of God the same way Yeshua spoke the word of God, and the devil left him until the next opportunity. In 11.18, it says, You are to set these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. So the importance of constantly feeding on the word of God to make sure that our heart is full. And scripture says out of the abundance of our heart, not out of the lack of our heart, but out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth speaks. So if we continually feed on the word of God, then that's what's going to come out automatically when we face uh, temptation and trials. Another important scripture, verse, uh, chapter 8, verse 5, As a man disciplines his son, so I deny your God disciplines you. So I'm very thankful for the discipline of the Lord. doesn't always feel good. I can tell you all kinds of wonderful stories of when I was disciplined when I was a kid, but I'll pass. And, uh, uh, but I learned later on when I look back. You know, when you, when you grow up, you get older, you look back, you say, ah, oh, that's what the farewell speech was about. That's what, the, uh, you know, mom and dad were telling me. That's what Moses was talking about. So in looking at this passage, it's really Moses' heart for the people. He, he says to them, he gives them food, the word of God, because he loves them, because he cares for them and he wants to prevent them from being destroyed. So God has given us an amazing gift, the Word of God. It's a gift, a living gift for us. And so we celebrate that as we listen to Moses go over the Word of God over and over. Why? Because he knows it's food. So we need to feed on God's Word constantly, always, so that we may be well fed and respond appropriately. So I'm going to chant from the beginning of the portion in chapter 7, verses 12 to uh, 17, and it does talk about if you listen, if you obey, if you keep, then God will take care of you. Yeah. 